This video demonstrates the surgical technique with the capture tension segment for profound zonular dialysis. This is a case of isolated ectopia lentis with a supranasal uh, crystalline lens subluxation. We're starting off with an infratemporal localized conjunctival pyridomy, which will be essentially the area where we'll fixate the segment to the sclera. And the groove we'll make initially, I like to make a partial thickness, basically a one quarter thickness uh, groove. Uh, one millimeter back from the spur. The spur, again, is the transition zone between the blue zone and the white sclera. Uh, in this case, this will be two millimeter back from limbus, but the spur is really the landmark to look at. That's the consistent landmark we look, we look to base upon which this groove is made. This groove is going to be, in this case, about three or four millimeters in length in the area of the dialysis. Uh, we then will make three conjunctival incisions. These are a millimeter in size. This will provide access to the anterior segment as well as uh, ports for needle passages we'll see shortly. We'll then inject some dispersive viscoelastic in the area of the dialysis. It's very important to keep that area tamponaded and coated with the right viscoelastic and then a cohesive agent injected in a soft shell modified technique and then a clear corneal incision is made. Here we're going to make three incisions here at the posterior limbal area. Uh, these are relatively uh, non-beveled incisions that will be used, small incisions here, half millimeter size for the iris retractors. This is a super viscous agent, viscoelastic here used to visco uh, dilate the pupil as well as flatten the anterior capsule. You can see exposure is going to be a challenge here, so using a super viscous agent is very, very helpful to provide expo exposure as well as pressurize the anterior segment and flatten the anterior capsule. A sharp trip micrograsper is used to pinch on the uh, capsule here uh, in the visual area here. You can see the lens is quite subluxed. And we're going to start this tear. In this case, the tear wants to go in a clockwise fashion. So we'll start the tear. It's very important here is to create a tear that's relatively centered on the, uh, ca on the capsule. Crystalline lens complex is, is hard to see, of course, but we can visualize uh, parts of the capsule here. And then we're going to use multiple incisions here, um, placing our micrograsper through different incisions to provide the best access. And in our non-dominant hand, in this case, using a Cleveland hook to help expose um, the portion of the capsule. Uh, the rexus here is important to make sure it is um, small enough that uh, it doesn't encroach the capsular equator, but not too small where it'll be difficult uh, to uh, perform the uh, lens extraction. You can see here now we're using another incision with the micrograsper to carry along uh, the capsular rexus. Uh, this rexus in this case will start off ovalized, of course, because the lens is uh, somewhat microspheric and oval. And as I said earlier, what's very important is to ensure that we retain an anterior capsule shelf, particularly in the area here centrally, as we proceed uh, with the capsular rexus. This is very important to ensure we have a shelf to place iris retractors, as well as for the segment uh, to be placed in that uh, quadrant. Here you can see we're using our non-dominant hand now through uh, the inferior paracentesis port to continue with the rexus here. And with the use of the super viscous uh, OVD, this really helps to prevent the rexus from running out and uh, by keeping that capsule flat and keeping that anterior chamber pressurized. So fortunately, we were able to continue and uh, perform a continuous curvilinear capsular rexus, which is critical uh, for this procedure. What one really has to ha ensure that rexus is, is continuous and uh, curvilinear. Here, the iris retractor here is used in a modified fashion on the capsular rexus edge. One can use capsular retractors here as well, although when we use a segment, there's really uh, no need for capsular retractors here. We essentially use iris retractors here and you'll see we'll use it along with the segment. But first, before we put the segment in the eye, it's helpful to have these retractors in the eye, basically holding the uh, capsular rexus in, in place here, uh, lifting up on the capsular rexus to facilitate placement of the um, capsular tension segment. Here we're going to use a super viscous OVD again to create some visco dissection. Uh, you'll see how well the peripheral capsular bag expands with the use of this cohesive agent, separating the cortex from the capsule, creating space uh, for the CTS to be placed in this quadrant. And we're going to do this basically for about 180 degrees in the vicinity of the intended placement of the segment. And you can see how having those iris retractors here really helps on the rexus edge to here hold that capsule in place during the injection. Remember, these are low flow states. There's really minimal risk for those uh, retractors to tear the rexus. But you'll see we will move them off the capsule rexus during the uh, lens aspiration stage. Uh, for concern, of course, where there may be focal tension on the rexus. Here's the uh, segment being placed carefully through the clear corneal incision. You can see it's got a, lead, a leading eyelet, a trailing eyelet, and a central eyelet that will be used for fixation, in this case with an iris retractor and later on with a suture. 
The segment is rotated here, ensuring that the um, comma-shaped central eyelet is placed anterior to the anterior capsule, while the leading and the trailing eyelet is placed and deposited under the capsule here with the Sinsky hook. It's hard to see sometimes, but it's important that the uh, segment, of course, is entirely in the capsular bag, except for the central comma-shaped central fixation here, eyelet, that we see here placed anterior to the anterior capsule. At this point, we can release the central iris retractor, turn it 180 degrees so it's pointing up, and then essentially place that uh, retractor through the central eyelet. Uh, this can be facilitated with use of micro grasper, holding the comma-shaped central eyelet and uh, placing the iris retractor through that eyelet and then uh, pulling it on the sleeve. Now, it's important not to pull too much on this uh, retractor at this point, uh, for the segment may actually torque and flip out of the bag. We'll then release uh, the two remaining iris hooks that uh, no longer serve a purpose. You can see how the bag is well supported by the uh, fundus of the segment, which expands the capsular equator here and securing the uh, lens in place. Notice again that we're preventing, uh, we're avoiding excessive tension. Some hydrodesection is performed, and then we can proceed with the uh, aspiration here. In this case, we're using the eye handpiece. This is a, essentially a clear lens in a young patient, uh, essentially aspirating out the cortex. You can note in this case we have not placed a CTR yet. Uh, because we had adequate support with the uh, CTS in place, and we'll put the CTR on later. And we'll carefully remove all that cortex here, um, eventually ensuring the bag is completely eva evacuated. Easier to remove this, of course, when the segment's in place, as opposed to a CTR, which can trap that cortex behind the, uh, the device itself. Before coming out, we're going to inject the viscoelastic cohesive in this case uh, to prevent the chamber from shallowing, prevent vitreous prolapse, absolutely critical. Uh, vitreous uh, presentation can certainly complicate things and we're going to add more dispersive here uh, in addition to the cohesive that was early injected to coat the area of analysis. In this case you'll see we now release the iris retractor from the segment again with the use of a micro grasper releasing it and bringing the segment out of the bag and into the central anterior chamber. More dispersive again is injected again to tamponade that vitreous face, create some space and the segment is now turned 90 degrees um, in the central anterior chamber. More viscoelastic being injected again. And you can see we've used different types of viscoelastics for different purposes. This is a 70 Gore-Tex CV8 needle, double armed. We're going to straighten the needle out. We find an ab external technique helpful in passing the needle. And a straight needle is helpful here to dock the needle into a 25 gauge hypodermic needle, as we'll see shortly. So we basically straighten it out with two heavy needle drivers. We're going to go to one edge, one edge of the groove here to try to central, centralize the fixation here. Perpendicular to the sclera, very important to enter perpendicular and then straighten out the uh, needle uh, to enter the anterior chamber. 25 gauge again through that groove in here. One end of the 7 gortex is used to dock the uh, needle with the hypodermic needle through the eyelet of the CTS, as we see here, and pulling out the needle through the groove. The CTS is then reposited back into the capsular bag uh, where it was initially, and uh, we're ready for our second pass to be made. The second pass will be made two millimeters or so away from the first pass, as we'll see through that groove, again with a 25 gauge needle. And now you can see the segment back in place, ensuring both both eyelets are in the bag with the central eyelet outside the bag. Again, perpendicular entry and then uh, straightening out the needle into the anterior chamber. Perpendicular helps to ensure that this device will be positioned adequately posterior to avoid iris chafing. And again, we went one millimeter back from the scleral spur initially for that groove. The use of a micro grasser can be helped to ensure that needle stays in that dock needle, the suture needle does, and this suture needle is then placed and pulled out through the groove. Now we have a continuous pass, um, shorten that uh, suture, this is the short end and the long end here. We will then tie the suture here in a slip knot, two throws in a single in the same direction here. And a slip knot will help us to tighten or loosen the suture depending on the uh, centration of the capsular bag. Uh, to secure this, it, it does help to have a, th a third hand here. Here we're going to basically hold the underlying suture while pulling on both loose ends to tighten that knot out. It helps to have that knot cinch down so we can pull it and loosen it as we need to. And then tighten it here as we see here toward one end of the sclerotomy that was made with the 25 gauge. And that will help to bury it through that, uh, through that sclerotomy. You can see how we're, we're ratcheting up the tension in the capsular bag. We still have not fully tightened things up. And the use of a CTR will be used now, injected through an injector into the capsular bag. This will help for circumferential tension, expand the capsular bag, and allow the capsular bag to be uh, positioned in a central position. It can sometimes be difficult uh, passing the CTR around the CTS, so just be careful. 
to ensure there's enough OVD in the capsule or bag prior to injection, and sometimes some twisting and turning can be helpful to get around the CTS. We're going to enlarge the incision slightly here to over 3 millimeters to allow an in-the-bag placement of a single-piece acrylic lens. In this case, it's a toric. This patient had 2.5 diopters of cylinder, as you saw was marked here with the rule. And the, and the IOL is injected safely into the capsular bag uh, with the haptic going into the uh, capsular bag here, both the leading and the trailing haptic. We'll then position the IOL in position here. And you can see that the IOL is starting to uh, maintain a good central position here. Now, because it's a toric lens, and even for routine cases, um, we like to remove the viscoelastic here manually as opposed to with the eye handpiece at this point. Uh, and you can see we're injecting and aspirating um, the OVD from behind the lens. Uh, we do find that uh, refraining from automated removal uh, at the conclusion of the case helps for vitreous prolapse, which is still certainly a concern. So we prefer to remove viscoelastic manually, both behind the lens, in front of the lens, and from the anterior chamber as much as we can. But really important to do that behind the lens in a toric lens. We're going to tighten it up the tension even more. So you can see from the beginning of the case, we're tightening up the tension onto the CTS further and further here. And uh, you can see the lens now is uh, in much better position. We avoided pulling on the CTS too much at the beginning because uh, one can lead to the CTS uh, torquing out of the bag initially. Now we basically cut the short end and lock the suture in place. This is the um, third throw in total here. And this is the locking throw to lock that uh, knot in place. We'd like to cut the suture about... Uh, half or a quarter millimeter in length. Put a my call here just to uh, bring the pupil down, ensure there's no vitreous in the anterior chamber. You can see the IO is well centered and on the axis of the intended corneal marks. We'll then rotate the knot with a pair of uh, micro um, needle drivers with one jaw here used to uh, p place a knot into the sclera and preferably rotate it into the eye to prevent any risk of uh, erosion through the conjunctiva, which certainly can happen if it's left out of the groove. We'll then, we'll then we'll close the contact with 10 with tenovicrol, and the main incision will be closed again with the same suture, typically using an X uh, mattress suture to close that. So these are all the detailed steps, step-by-step -step techniques using a single CTS. Sometimes we use two if needed, but in this case we use one. With Gore-Tex suture, suture to the uh, sclera, uh, placed along with the CTR for adequate fixation, in this case with a torque eye well on a young patient with isolated ectopia lentis.